further. Mm. If we can't move them from a place where they are and send them into the light, then we usually have to bind them, okay. which means we have to bind them to an object or really? a dimensional energy where they can't mm. come back and cause the same problem all over again. Well, okay. Well, then, well, then, when did Jesus know then that that did he bind these the the demon legion to the pigs? Is it perhaps that they're still That's there? Right. That's exact. That's exactly what he did. He bound them to the animal. In in one of the trainings that I did, I was working with a curandero who is a a type of holy man that works with the tradition of, um, well, it's a South American, Middle American, Central American tradition where they teach you how to bind entities to objects or animals. And Mm -hmm. in that particular case, there's sometimes where the entity refuses to go into the light Mm -hmm. and they won't leave the area. So when the when you bind them to an animal, they? they the soul is then bound to the soul of the animal. When the animal dies, the soul is then will travel to wherever the animal goes, mm-hmm. and that way they're forced to leave. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, Joey says that I that I butchered his question. Joey, if you want to re- send your question back up on the fa- or the on the live chat there, I'll I'll, I'll try it again. I, I I don't I don't just kind of read through there, so I may not ask the question in the way that it was meant. So, well, I said again, uh, d- Doctor, when uh, when you're dealing with these attached spirits, uh, and oh, by the way, you mentioned um, uh, you you want to send them to the light, uh, and I think you also mentioned that perhaps maybe maybe. I just kind of picked up. You really don't believe there are, say, like a say a chief demon, like a devil. There's more like just say some really nasty negative energy type of thing. But uh, s- biblically, th- the chief demons are are, are listed as a, sort of a, a light being. Uh, is there two lights? Um, I'm not sure I followed the question. Well, there, the chief- well, like a chief demon, or say the devil. Okay. The chief, chief the, the head, the, yeah, chief, yeah, chief, the chief. head devil, okay. uh, you know, okay. guy with the pointy ears, the pitchfork, dude. Okay. Uh, biblically, the biblical test says that he may appear as an angel of light. Therefore, he must be able to work in the light. Are there two lights? Is there a good light and a bad well, light? Well, there's, like we said earlier, the sephirotic or the, the energy of the source can be divided into two different types of energy, sephirotic being constructive glyphotic being destructive mm-hmm. and they both appear as light really so if one is heading to the light you need to really make sure which light you're heading to part of where a person heads to really depends on what we call their sonin the sonin is a person's innermost thought form how they think how they feel how they mm-hmm. believe and mm-hmm. it's reflected in how they live their life mm-hmm. so at the time a person makes the choice the sonin or the energy that they bring into the, the, the next life uh-huh. has a lot to do with how they live their life. Yeah. If a person has positive creative energy and that's the majority of the energy that they live with, then it'll be easier for them to enter into the positive life. That person mm-hmm. was a destructive, uh, negative sort of, uh, let's say, bad person, quote unquote, yeah. Yeah. it's going to be harder to get them to mesh with the sephirotic mm-hmm. energy. Mm. Um, you, you mentioned in the first hour, Dr. Gibson, that. Uh, that you first saw these other than life entities or life challenged entities um, in a hospital, are there other areas that you have found that these entities like to congregate? Let's see, hospitals probably would be one of the more common areas. They like to mm-hmm. congregate around cemeteries, oh, uh, they like okay. to congregate around bars. Really? And around places where there have been bad car accidents. And another place I like to congregate around is um, school grounds where there are a lot of children, like young mm-hmm. children, playgrounds, mm-hmm. daycare centers, those types of areas. Do you, do you think that the, the humans, and I'm going to say, say created here rather than evolved, but do you, do you think that humans, just for the context of the question here, that they were created with the ability to have what we call goosebumps as a warning that a bad entity is near? I can I can accept that and that the the entities that are the all that related to second dimensional entities or energies can naturally be frightening to a person, to a human being. Mm-hmm. 
and one of the, the basic the primitive defense mechanisms we have against things that scare us mm -hmm. are those uh, very sensitive autonomic responses. Mm -hmm. your, your heartbeat speeds up, your breathing speeds up, you get goose flesh. All of those things, I think, are related to mm -hmm. um, the type of experience that you're talking about. I think it is protective. Okay. So, so we, we sort of like an instinct, then we, we have a mechanism that allows us to know uh, – that they're they're near or they're or, or coming at you, I guess. Uh, you mentioned just a second ago, though, that uh, you, you find that they like to congregate around bars. Is that because they need a good? Mm -hmm. They need a stiff drink at the end of the day. <laughs> Did I just say stiff drink? Well, well, a lot of people that die in the world drink. Yeah, and a lot of people mm -hmm. that when they leave the physical body, they still have a desire for alcohol. Oh. And so they okay. tend to naturally gravitate toward places where they can get a drink. Yeah. And when you talk wow. to a lot of people that leave bars, a lot of times they mm -hmm. don't they will do things that they don't remember. Mm -hmm. They have what we call blackouts. And when yeah. you do a, a spiritual investigation on that, quite often you find that there's an entity associated with that blackout. They know that uh -huh. when a person drinks they're easy to take over. Really? Or attached to. Hmm. Or possess. That's right. Uh, uh, Dr. Mitchell Gibson, as you progress, and I guess I, I would assume any in any field of one's choosing or one that you just kind of move into by circumstance, that one would get better over time. Um, if you were to say to to rate your own experience, would you say you have a master's degree of experience in Entity observation and removal, or would you say you have a bachelor's degree? Where, where do you feel that you're at in your field right now? I'm still very young, I would say. Still mm -hmm. learning a lot. I've learned a lot. I've dealt with thousands of cases, but I've seen true masters in the field, and I would mm -hmm. not call myself a true master mm -hmm. and the tradition of some of the people that train me. I still have a lot to learn. Okay, so... In, in, in the levels then, what can a higher, using your word master, do that you can't? Can they walk through walls too? Well, a true master um, has the ability to solidify a ghost against its will. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, that's something yeah. that I saw and I thought, I know people could do that. They can talk yeah. to a ghost uh -huh. and they can make that ghost appear in front of you as you're talk as they're talking to really? you. Really? Doggone this thing you've ever seen. Now talk about goose flesh. That'll give you goose flesh. <laughs> or, I don't know if I want to see it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Also, a true master um, mm -hmm. can take an entity's energy from it mm -hmm. and store it inside of a, a physical object uh -huh. within a matter of seconds. So a ghost can be talking to him if a ghost refuses to leave an area. Mm -hmm. A true master can take an object and place that mm -hmm. ghost inside of that object, and the ghost can never get out. Now, now you're back to the Ghostbusters theme. You know they had the, the you you cross the streams of their machines and you bring them down into a box. So, you, so it looks like they were they were onto something there. Well, they were talking about a, a number of spiritual entities. One of which I've seen work called a bia, which is something a bia, mm -hmm. something that I saw work in Thailand, where a master is able to take a bia, mm -hmm. take it into a place. And basically sweep it clean of all the ghostly entities that are in there. Yeah. Doggone the thing you've ever seen. Mm. So they don't need any electricity or any fancy uh, lights mm. or anything with yeah. it. It just they speak a word and the ghosts end up being sucked into there. Mm. So, so that's that's okay. just the the tip of the iceberg of the kind of stuff I've seen uh, okay. true masters do. So so does so does the ghost know? that the the yogi or the master has this power and has to obey him and, and why would they have to obey him because the other guy the 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 live person knows that the this entity must be com obey his commands i mean how does he know does, does he see like he have like a sergeant shirt on does the ghost see the master as someone who has ascended or someone who has 